I would like to call to the stage now our invited speaker for this year, founder of Quizlet, Mr. Andrew Sutherland. Thank you. And congratulations, class of 2019. I'm honored to be here today. I've heard a lot of you here used Quizlet. <laughs> Me too. When I started Quizlet in 2005, I had no idea it would be used by more than 50 million people every month. Honestly, I just built it for myself so I wouldn't fail French. Some context. For the parents out there who aren't quite sure what Quizlet is, um, your, your kids uh, got here possibly because of Quizlet. <coughs> Quizlet is an online learning app that a lot of students use. You can put any material into Quizlet and we'll help you practice it with flashcards, practice tests, and games. I've learned so much since I started Quizlet. I've learned about setting goals, managing people, and building a team. But the most important lesson I've learned is to always treat people well. I know that's something you've probably heard before, but there's something to it. We make choices all the time. And right now, as you're graduating from high school, people are probably asking you the same questions. What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? But more important than the what's and the where's is the how. How are you going to treat people through it all? Will you be someone who treats people well? Because I promise you this, they'll notice. And it's not just that they'll notice, they'll remember. When I look back, what really stands out are the people who showed me how to treat people well. Let me tell you about them. I went to high school in the East Bay. When picking a foreign language, you didn't choose the language you were most interested to learn. You picked which teacher you were brave enough to have. In a moment of foolishness, I chose French with Madame Salvin. We came into her class as rough material. To us, French was just another class we were taking, but not for long. It quickly became much more than that. We regularly had to sit on a stool in front of the whole class and recite 19th century poems from memory. And then we had to write long essays in French analyzing the poet's meaning and the quality of the sound, the sonorité. On many, on many nights, we would have three hours of French homework. It was nuts. One time, I presented a two and a half minute verbal essay in French, and her response was, is that it? That is not enough. It's good, I said, to which she gave me her unimpressed look and said, sure, but again, it is not enough. For Madame Salvin, there was no excuse for not meeting her high expectations. But every time we recited something or turned in our grammar worksheets, we built a little more understanding and a little more belief in our own ability to learn. And as that train picked up steam, we came to see ourselves as capable. We began to look forward to the next news article to translate, or the next obscure tense to learn. We became human vacuum cleaners, sucking in all the French we could get our hands on. She opened a door to a new world, but we stepped through it ourselves. She never explicitly talked about that as being her goal, 
but that was her magic trick. She built in each of us a sense of confidence that we could learn anything and love doing it. She knew we'd figure it out. It's because of Madame Salvin's class that I created Quizlet. One night in my sophomore year, my dad was quizzing me on my vocab. It was 111 French animals. <laughs> like, I'm not even sure I could tell you 111 animals in English. <laughs> One of the words was un chevreuil, and that's French for a small forest deer. And yes, I still remember. <laughs> we had all these pieces of paper, and my dad was trying to keep track of what I got wrong and what I got right, and it was a huge mess. I was teaching myself to program at the time, so I decided to build a digital way to study my French, to survive this class. And that's how Quizlet was born. Madame Salvin remains a mentor and a friend. In fact, she's here in the audience today. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> she taught me something that inspires me every day. When others set high expectations of you and support you along the way, you'll achieve more than you ever thought was possible. I'd like to ask you to think, who are the people in your life who have high expectations of you? I know some of them are sitting behind you today. It may not always feel like they're being nice, but these people are showing you the highest respects. As you begin this next chapter, I encourage you to surround yourself with people who have high expectations of you. So fast forward a few years. I was a freshman at MIT. <clears throat> Unexpectedly, the single most important choice I made was not my major, it wasn't my classes, it was the people I chose to live with. Dorm culture was totally different from what I expected. The building itself was a rundown place, but it was full of creativity. There were murals everywhere, even on the ceilings. One guy on my floor had rigged up a big red party button in his room. When you pressed it, it would lower the blinds, turn on green laser lights, and start playing dance music. It was dope. <laughs> Everyone living there was really smart, and it could have felt competitive, but it wasn't. Here's the thing, MIT is freaking hard. And I wasn't used to asking for help. But just like everyone else, I was drowning in the difficulty. We all felt like we were going to be the one person in this group of smart people who was going to fail. The upperclassmen who lived with us knew exactly that feeling. And our dorm had a tradition where we banded together and helped each other out. We did our homework in the halls together. The older students would work with the younger students to solve tough problems. We had no dining hall, so we cooked and ate together. The thing was, we could never have survived without each other's support. This experience, where we were pretty much forced to get help, made me wonder, why didn't I ask for help before? And so later, as a junior, I wanted to be out there in the halls helping the freshmen with their tough problem sets because I knew how hard it was to ask for help. So whatever you do next, you're likely to find yourself in completely unfamiliar territory. But there will be people who've been in those situations before and they'll want to help you. You just have to find the courage to ask. 
Everyone has something to teach you. Some will teach you who you want to be, and others will teach you who you don't want to be. After MIT, I had an experience where a role model of mine broke my trust. They lied to me and took advantage of my inexperience. I was devastated. Fortunately, I had another role model who showed me a different way. Comparing these two people, I saw that there are different paths to success, and it's up to you to decide which one to take. This time in my life taught me all about integrity and honesty. In fact, I've developed a personal policy. It's really simple. Be honest. Don't lie, ever. One good thing is that it makes your life really simple, because you don't have to keep track of what you told to which person. <laughs> but more importantly, being honest with people is what creates trust. You get to choose the principles you live by. If you can find the courage to be honest, you'll develop a reputation as a trustworthy person. So I'll ask you, what is your reputation today? What do you want it to be? What I've seen over and over is that people you meet in one place in your life will pop up again later somewhere else. For example, we just hired a new employee named Cyrus. Before he took the job, he reached out to three of our former employees to get a sense of what Quizlet is like. And they all told him that Quizlet is a great place to work. They could have said that we were terrible people. He could have rejected his offer, and we would have never known why. Instead, he joined our team, and he became a valuable colleague. It's moments like these when you aren't in the room, that how you treat people can make all the difference. And this kind of thing doesn't just happen in business. A while ago, I went on a date. And we, we, we knew pretty quickly that it wasn't going to turn into anything. <laughs> and we were, we were honest with each other about it. No ghosting happened here. <clears throat> a few months later, I walked into an all-hands meeting at Quizlet, meaning the entire staff was in the room. And this same woman was doing a training on behalf of her company. Surprise! <laughs> it could have been really awkward, but it was fine because we were respectful to each other. And whether it's a date, or a roommate, or a potential coworker, we all do our homework to find out what people are like. The more you've treated people well, the more people will be there for you, to cheer you on and to help you out. Finally, I have to say I'm jealous of all of you right now. The time right after high school is the time when you're most free to define yourself to figure out what kind of person you want to be. So take some risks. You can make mistakes, we all do. But I hope you remember, if you can value the high expectations of others, if you can learn to ask for help and receive it, if you can be honest with people, even when it's hard, and always treat people well. I promise you, life will feel richer. For the people that care about you and for yourself. And I'd call that a success. Thank you.